word arrangement, the rule for arranging a word with no repeated letters or repeated letters are treated as different and a letter used once. Let us have some examples so that at least we understand when we say a word with no repeated letters or repeated letters are treated as different, right? Here is an example. Patrick is a word with no repeated letters. You can actually check that we don't have any repeated letter here. Cell phone is a word with repeated letters treated as different. Or oh, what it means, the word difference is what I want to explain to you in terms of, we are going to treat the letters that are repeating L and E as letters that are not repeated. That is if I count how many letters I have here, I have nine of them. So the fact that we are treating repeating letters as different. So it's like we have nine different letters. That is all what it means. Like you see here in Patrick, we have seven different letters, right? Because there's no repeated. So here we are going to treat repeated letters as different. That means we have nine different letters. We don't consider L as repeating. We don't consider E as repeating. It will be they are different letters we are seeing. So in such a case, that's the rule that we want to come up with, where each time you are told that treat repeated letters as different, you know that you don't see letters that are repeating. It will be there, like they are all different, right? So that's the rule we are going to look at. We record the fundamental counting principle, which states that if there are M ways to do one thing and N ways to do the other thing, then there are M times N ways to do both things. Like the word ways, it can simply mean the possibility of some things happening. Like an example, if I toss a coin, what is the possible outcomes? We can have a head and a tail, right? So there are only two possible outcomes. So there are only two ways of tossing a coin to get a head or a tail. The head and tail are the two possibilities. So I always want you to associate the ways with the possible outcomes so that you don't get confused, right? The rule for arranging a word with no repeated letters or repeated letters are treated as different and the letter used once is as follows. Number of arrangements of N different things in N positions is N factorial. That is what simply the uh, rule states. The fact that we have any different things which we are to position in any different positions, then at the end of the day, you simply know that you are going to do that in any factorial ways. How can this rule be understood? Now I'm going into details so that at least you understand why we then say any factorial. So I will start explaining so that we end up coming to a situation where we conclude that as long as we have any different things, arranging them in any position, then we can do that in any factorial way. Right, here is an example, number one. No repeated letters in the word and letters used once. How many ways can you arrange the letters in the word Patrick? a letter is used once, right? So when you look at the word Patrick, you should know that there are letters and there is no letter that is repeating. So how many letters do we have? Two, four, six, we have seven of them. So if we are supposed to arrange them, that means we are supposed to fill in seven positions. So in short, I'm simply saying there are seven letters in the word and it has seven positions to fill. 
right? So the positions are position one up to seven. So how are we going to fill those positions? All what it means is initially there are seven letters to choose from. That means if we want position number one, we have uh, to choose from the seven letters or any of the seven letters can occupy that. So we can have seven choices there. Then once you have filled position number one, how many letters are left? There are now six, meaning position number two, how many choices do we have? Any of the six letters left can occupy position number six. That is what it means. Then now position one and two are filled. How many letters left? Five. Position number three, it means now we have five letters to choose from. So N of the five can occupy position number three. That is the like possible outcome. Right, so at the end, we have five to occupy position three. Now three positions are filled, right? From seven, we now have four letters left. So position number four, we have four letters. Position number um, five, we have three letters. Position number six, we have two letters. Position number seven, we have um, one. Right, so the understanding in this context is simply we are saying if we are to fill position number one with the seven letters, right, that means n of the seven we can choose from n, so we still have seven choices, right? But once we fill this, how many choices are left? We are left with six letters, right, to choose from. Once it's occupied, we are left with the five, four, and so on going down. Once you understand what is going here, then at the end to understand this rule is very simple. Therefore, by the fundamental counting principle, right? Fundamental counting principle is we are saying when we say we have seven choices, that means the possibility here we can put any one of the seven, right? So this position, we can fill it in seven ways. This one in six ways, this one five ways and till one. So together, then that's where the fundamental counting principles comes in. You multiply like that, then you get one. But when you look at this, this is simply seven factorial which is seven factorial, which means now going back to our rule, we have seven different letters occupying seven different positions, meaning to arrange such letters, we simply say seven factorial. That is what the rule was saying, of which here I was trying to demonstrate to you how we come up with the seven factorial, right? So the rule arrangements of any different things in any position is n factorial. So seven letters, seven position, seven factorial. But we arrived at that by way of understanding exactly what is happening, which is what is important. But at the end, when you dominate this, all what you need to check is, do you have um, seven different letters feeding seven positions? Yes. So to make such arrangement, it's seven factorial. Let us look at example number two. Repeated letters in the word treated as different and letters used once, right? So we are asking, how many ways can you arrange the letters in the word cell phone? Repeated letters are treated as different and letters are used once. Once the word different is there, that means this is a, a word with no repeating letters. They are all different in your eyes because of this word different, treated as different, right? So there are nine letters in this word. 
and hence nine positions to fill. Repeated letters are treated as different and letters used once, right? So once you see that this is what is there, you can, could actually jump to simply say it's nine factorial, but let me go further and simply now come up with about nine um, columns, each column representing a position, position one to position nine, the nine positions we are talking about here. So we are saying the first position, how many choices do we have to fill the first position? We have nine of them. That is of the nine letters, any one of them can be there. Once this position is filled, we now have eight letters and so on and so forth. And again, looking at this, this is where we come up with the fundamental counting principle, such that together, how are we going to arrange? We simply multiply them. And this gives you straight away nine factorial, right? So by fundamental counting principle, there are nine factorial ways of arranging letters in this way, right? So this is the um, rule that as it is arrived at, what happened? This is exactly what will be happening. So that if you take this route, you end up actually understanding the, um, the rule you saw. But later, as you go working with problems, as long as you have nine different letters being arranged in nine different positions, then it is nine factorial, right? So we have already um, applied the rule that we have nine, I mean, n different things in our case is nine, right? Nine letters in any position, which is the same as the nine letters. So as such, um, it will be n factorial, which is nine factorial. Note that in respect of where the arrangements, questions, letters, that are repeated in the word can be treated as the same, that is indistinguishable or different, that is distinguishable. The question will be specific in this regard. All this is re referring to exam situation. Suppose if you are simply asking that, how many ways can you arrange the word cell phone and no other information is given? That means at the end, you have to treat the repeated letters the way you are supposed to treat them. But then if they specify to say, treat the repeated letters as different, then again, you have a different approach.